Good morning, everyone. Pastor Leif here. Um, we're talking about the before and after effect when you come into contact with the truth, when you come into contact with Jesus. We're using some personalities in the book of John, uh, more specifically John chapter 12, where we see the before and after effect. I mean, we started in, in Hebrews 4, you know, that the word, it, it divides. The word is going to point out. The word is going to cut the word. So it's going to hurt. Really, if you want to have a, a clear picture or a view, not only of the word, the, it's a living word, but of your own life. You know, so uh, I was talking about Lazarus, the before and after effect in the life of Lazarus. How, what had happened in his life and how God used his sickness to glorify his name and for many people to believe that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. Today, I want to talk about Martha, the before and after effect in the life of Martha. I mean, you know, uh, many people put her down and I even had put her down preaching. So I, I might need to apologize to Martha, you know, because sometimes we, we kind of in, in wanting to point out the extravagant worship of Mary. We kind of put Martha down, but service is as important as listening and sitting down at the feet of Jesus, you know. Um, but what got me this week, I was kind of studying her name. I, I don't think I've ever went like in depth, you know, to, to understand the name Martha, where came from and it comes from the verb mar-ar, m-a-r-a-r, -A -A meaning to be bitter. And the masculine now, which is a, which is a little different the way that they, they spell, you know, it's an m-o-r and it denote a bitter fragrant spice uh, which becomes uh, known to us as myrrh. Uh, the root verb mara means to be contentious rebellious against or disobedient towards, which is obviously a stance adjacent of marar, meaning to be bitter. So our verb mara is used 45 times in the Bible. The large majority of occurrences describe men's kind's disobedience towards God. The verb more means to change, alter or exchange and it obviously looks similar to the previous word particularly the noun more meaning mer this is possibly an etymology uh, the etymological coincidence but it probably caused the popular mind to relate to change or at least changed marked by something so it's like bitterness came as a result of something that happened either as a cause or a consequence. This suggests that the bitterness expressed in the verb mar-ar is not a mere static situation of a certain intensity, but serve as an incitement to or a consequence of change. So in other words, when you see the name, and we know, you know, in the Hebrew language, when you see a name, a name carries a lot, the weight what the person stands for, the, the characteristics or the character of the person. It was expressed in the name. And that's why there was a change of name from Simon to Peter, from Saul to Paul, from Jacob to uh, Israel. And, and that, I mean, the way that is so amazing when we see, uh, you know, the, the meaning behind the name. So when we see Mar Martha, not Mary, Martha, I, I believe that Jesus, when he called her attention, and, and, and that's in Luke chapter 10, I just want to go there to, to remember a little bit because, you know, she welcomed him to her house and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and, and heard his word. But Martha, which is Mar R, Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, you do not care. You do not care that my sister has left me to serve alone. Therefore, tell her to help me. Um, and Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Worried and troubled. There's nothing wrong with serving. But when you serve from that platform, when you serve from that place of being worried and troubled by it, you're doing it, but you're not enjoying. You're doing it, but you're bitter. You're doing it, but you're concerned with others that are doing other things. That is the problem. So that's the first encounter that we see. And from that on, we see that, you know, I, I mean, we see how much Jesus loves her, how much he loves Martha, how much he loves you and me, how much he loves, even if you are in a place right now, and because of the consequences, because of things that are going on, it made you bitter. You were not bitter before, but because of what happened, 
I mean, life sometimes throws stuff at us that we really don't understand. We don't comprehend why. Why are you alive in this, Lord? You know, it could be, could be in the case of Martha that, you know, she, that we don't see the parents there. It could be that they were dead. It could be that, you know, she was the one in charge of the whole house. She was, you know, most likely they had an inn. They had a place for people to stay. And that's why they knew so many people, you know, so she had to take care of everything. And and then it's like, I'm cleaning, I'm washing, I'm cooking, I'm doing all this. And, and Mary's going to sit at his feet. You know, so she was kind of, you know, it's 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 like, uh, you know, when you're by yourself and when 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 your spouse travels and you have to take care of the house and the kids and do everything that you know your spouse did on top of everything that you do it and and then it's like you you feel like overwhelmed and you just want someone to help you. So that's what was happening with her. And then the next times that we see her, it was when Lazarus was dead. And she comes, she confronts Jesus. And she says, if you were here, you know, he would not have died. And I mean, and, and on and on and on and on and on. But the word of God says that Jesus loved Martha. Jesus loved Martha. Just like he loves you. Even if you're bitter. Even if life was, it took such a turn that things don't make sense. Even if you question why. How can I trust God? Look at this. Look what had happened. You know, but we see that through those encounters, we see that through what Jesus, Jesus was taking her in the journey. You know, the before and after. Sometimes it happens all at once. But sometimes it's like it's several encounters in several places where you see the hand of God. Several places where you see the love of God, the kindness of God. And you see how God treats you and how He wants to heal you. He's so interested in that. He wants to, for you, remember that the purpose of John writing this book is that if you believe in Him, that He is the Son of the living God, that He is the Messiah, that if you believe in His name, you will have life. Not survival, not like barely, you know, passing by. It's like, oh man, this month was tough. No, no, it's more than that. The thief comes only to kill, steal, destroy. He came that we might have life and have it to the full. So one thing and that the before and after effect of Jesus in the life of Martha that teaches us, and I believe is this, that even if you went through something in your life that made your life bitter, made you rebellious, made you bossy, made you contentious. Uh, you can still change because of the love of Jesus, because He cares, because He will come to your rescue, because His resurrection power is available, not only to Lazarus, His resurrection power is available to you, because if you believe, you will see the glory of God manifested. So when we go to John chapter 12, we see that six days after, before the, I mean, before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, uh, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they, they made him supper and Martha served. But Lazarus was on one of those who sat at the table with him. You don't see her bothered anymore. You see she's excited. She's serving. She's blessed. You know, that transformation took place. I mean, it was the same thing that she was doing before, but with a different attitude. And we hear that all the time, that attitude determines altitude. The way that you do things, the way that you serve, not only the Lord, the way, the way that you serve others, you know, what you put out, it's what you receive. So, you know, start putting out something that people will look and that it, it's going to bounce back to you. And sometimes what is bouncing back to you is what you're giving to them. It's your attitude. So if you change, if you love, boom, it's going to come back in love and you're going to get, have a different harvest. Amen. So let's learn that with Martha today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, give us the grace to learn, to have this before and after effect, not only the life of those in the Bible, that we would have it in our own lives, Lord God, that we would see the before and after effect of meeting the truth the living Word of God. I pray that you bless us today. I pray, Lord God, if the, those that are bitter, that are resentful, those that are hurting right now. Lord God, that your love would be revealed in such a way that change would come, that joy would come, and that we would serve from a different attitude in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Pastor Leif. See you soon. Bye now.